Hello and welcome to Trauma Lab. Today I'm going to talk about two things you can do right now to get the dysregulation in your body and mind under control. You know what it's like, it's hard enough even to get a diagnosis for CPTSD, let alone to find treatments that work. I've road tested a whole host of different treatments from medical to more holistic and these are the two that I found that if I practice daily regularly really provoke a big shift in the way that I experience life. You see what these two techniques do, and they do have a lot in common as you'll see, is they break that fear feedback loop that I talk about. You can see more of that in this video. They make my brain clearer, they make my body lighter, they help to shake, you know that sluggishness that you get, that you're kind of carrying around with you all day. They intercept that, they make you feel lighter, brighter, more present. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first one, breath work. Breath work is genius. You can do it wherever you are, I've done it in public places, I've done it on public transport, I've done it at home, I've squirreled myself off quickly from my family. It's a blessing. You know when you get dysregulated or heaven forbid you have a panic attack and it feels like your breath, you just can't get enough in. Your breath gets really shallow. Well that's your body reacting to the dysregulation. It's telling you that you need to conserve energy to fight or flee. And the breath is an anchor for your entire nervous system. So we need to go the other way around and show the body and the brain that we are actually not in danger. Rather than the fear loop affecting the way our brain talks to our nervous system and then affecting our breath, we're going the other way. We're going to affect our breath, take deeper breaths to calm the nervous system that will then feed back to our brains. Because of what happened to us in our childhoods, we have this fear bias and our nervous system is constantly being triggered by a brain which is on edge within that fear loop. So we are teaching our body and our brains to reinterpret the world around us, that the world is not a scary place, that things are okay. And we do that by regulating our breath regularly. So how exactly do we do it? Well, we take slower, more regular, more intentional breaths and prompts are very helpful. You know, I'm showing you here a YouTube channel called Feeling Healing, link below. It's a very, very simple and I find effective way of just following a prompt. In this case, box breathing is what you're seeing. We breathe in for a fixed period, we hold for a fixed period, we breathe out for a fixed period, and we hold for a period, and we carry on for three, five, 10 minutes, what you, whatever you can spare. Really, the key here is to do it regularly. So if you can only spare one minute, do it for one minute but do it. And you know, I do find it useful to use resources like Feeling Healing, where someone else is doing the work of keeping you in time. It really releases the cognitive load and it reassures our brain so that we're not distracted. We can park that. We know we're doing this for a fixed amount of time and we know we don't need to do anything but breathe, which all of us can do. And you know, I use it throughout the day. I almost use it as a way of clearing my cash, if you like. Any stress that's built up, any time I feel dysregulated, any time somebody affects me in a way that I feel like I'm starting, my hackles are starting to rise, I can have this available to me wherever, whenever, and I can come back down and take control. So let's move on to the second technique, heart rate variance or HRV. HRV is a measure of the variance in the time between each of your heartbeats. And the lower that number is, the more likely it is that you're in your fight or flight mode. Again, by anchoring to the breath and doing HRV exercises, some of which extend the exhale more than the inhale, which again triggers your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest response. And this is my go-to activity, both first thing in the morning and last thing at night. I don't know how dysregulation affects you, but I often wake up feeling quite triggered. So first thing in the morning, this allows me to see my HRV score, to see that I'm in my sympathetic response or fear response, and to do the breath exercises that show me that my HRV is rising, and as a result, I'm moving into my parasympathetic or rest 
response. And yeah, there is a low barrier to entry with this, but you do need a heart rate band. You can pick these up on Amazon. They're not hugely expensive. They can be, you know, £38, $45, something like that. I think that's the one I've got. And you strap that on and connect it to a free app. And there are loads and loads on the App Store. I think I'm using Elite HRV, but I'm sure the others are just as good. And essentially, you then connect the heart rate monitor with the app and bingo, you can go ahead and do the exercises and the training. And you can do neat things if you're interested in data and trends. And it's nice to see the improvement over time of how you are getting a better baseline. Now on the one I use, there are a lot of breath work exercises that you can do. There are similar things to what we talked about before, box breathing, extended sigh, things like that. I've actually found it most useful to create my own breathwork session. And I think this is worth mentioning actually, because I think it is quite a personal thing. For me, what works best is that I breathe in and out a lot longer than the exercises that were on offer within the app. So I've, I've created a five second inhale and I hold for two and I exhale for seven and a half and then hold for two and a half. I just found that when I was practicing, that was the most calming sequence I could do. And it is longer than the set standard default ones on the app. So it's worth personalizing it for what works for you. Now, as I explained in this video, you need to treat your CPTSD injury with soothing and with calm and to break that fear feedback loop that is often the default setting, isn't it, for us? And over time, with continuous little prompts to the brain that things are okay, that the body is calm, that the world is safe, that you are loved, that you can experience life without fear. The brain will start to regulate itself. It's consistency and action that we need to do. And these two techniques go a long way in helping us with that. As ever, I'm with you every step of the way and I wish you success in doing this and peace in your heart and mind.